Welcome back to 843 TV. Joining us again is Chris Wilson, the interim head of schools, and my trusty sidekick for the whole day today, Dee Matthews, the board chair. So we are going to talk a little bit more about the growth that you guys are having. And so next year you will be kindergarten through 11th grade. Tell us about how you are approaching that with your curriculum. Sure. We, uh, our curriculum next year, of course, we have to add some 11th grade courses. Right. Uh, we are partnering with TCL for some dual enrollment uh, courses, okay. uh, looking into some a offering some AP classes uh, that kind of goes along with some of the logistics of scheduling and, and uh, facilities, which we'll talk about soon. Yeah. Um, our, we are starting a new reading curriculum at the younger grades, grades uh, I believe one and two right now are going to be starting a new reading curriculum next year that with the new Read to Succeed legislation uh, we feel will be impactful on our students. Um, I think that's about all. Yeah. I apologize. No, that's okay. That's interesting to me that um, you're saying with TCL for 11th grade because I know a lot of the area schools do that for senior year but you're going to be maybe, maybe able to offer that for 11th grade as well. Even, I believe even our 10th graders are um, eligible for it to take dual enrollment college courses for credit. Um, they have to take the AccuPlacer and score high enough in uh, reading mm -hmm. mathematics and if, if they score high enough then they're eligible to take those courses. Yeah. And exciting. we have some extremely bright young people, some students, we really mm -hmm. do. So to open the door for them at the 10th grade would make sense and would only be, you know, what our parents and stakeholders would expect because of their needs. Yeah. And we are working on, we're probably, uh, we will be transitioning to a block schedule, a true block schedule, okay. four by four, which will enable them to have more credits per year earned and give them the ability to take dual credit without it infringing on their actual academics for high school. Yeah, I, I just think that is so exciting that the kids that really deserve that opportunity mm -hmm. have a way to get that opportunity. It's, yeah. it's a great program. And so are you still um, a STEM school? We are still a STEM school and that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And I think most of the um, 21st century teaching is going and expanding to that. Uh, we have a lot and I would love to add this. We have a, probably as many females participating in these um, classes as we do males, which is exciting for everyone. But we have a great curriculum with, again, the Paideia methodology, which goes to the whole child education and along with the STEM to take them into the competing with an ever-growing and ever-challenging global society. So yes, yeah. we're... We're working hard to make sure we have everything right. they need. So yes. they can get even further advanced than I am in technology because I, I feel so far behind of my kids and all the kids that are coming up now. It's just incredible what they're learning. It's really oh, exciting. It so you guys in the last five years have gone from 300 students to over 700 students. What do you attribute that growth to and how are you handling that growth? Handling it sometimes is tough because you outgrow. What we have done literally is we desperately need our new facilities yeah. because we do not have probably an inch to grow. We don't have another room to put another classroom in as it exists at the current sites at this time. So this is fundamentally an absolute necessity for us. But the good part is that we really can fill those classes and our charter would actually love for us to add, we have three grades, three classes in each grade. Our charter, because of the growth of our students and their academic accolades, would love for us to be able to offer four. And possibly as the future grows, we may. But the pains, I guess, of the growth are making sure you have the uh, faculty to meet those demands mm -hmm. of the new classes and the new subjects and have everything ready for them. Uh, we have a lot of technology and want to even put more technology into the hands of our students. So it, it, there are some growing pains, as with any school, but you know, we, we're working pretty diligent. We have good leaders, so I think we're moving along pretty well. Yeah, yes. I, well, I think you're doing a great job, obviously, but what do you think makes the school so appealing to people? I think, you know, for me, I was hired a year ago, mm -hmm. and when I walked through the doors at Bridges, I felt something that, um, that I hadn't felt in some other schools, and, and for me, the best way I can describe it is it feels like a family. And, uh, you know, the teachers know the students. They have 23 students in their class. They get to know their students very well. Um, you know, we have a lot of involved parents. Uh, and it, it really does, you know, make for a great educational, um, you know, environment yeah. when you have that kind of support and that kind of, uh, you know, small class size. And it, obviously, one of the things you're trying to do is to keep that class size small. So like you said, with yes. having 
three classes in each grade, but maybe mm -hmm. then moving to a fourth so you can keep that to number keep that, that way. To keep those, yes. number, those individual class sizes small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so you are starting construction, we talked about that in the last segment, on the upper school on Robert Smalls Parkway in Port Royal. So what are the plans um, to bring other grades to that site? Eventually, all uh, K through um, 12 will be on that site. Okay. We purchased enough land to do that. We actually are looking at some additional land for athletic needs and just for general parking, to be very honest with you. But we do have the um, plans drawn out. The high school, middle and high school will be the first segment. Okay. Then the elementary school will be put on. And again, um, we think that when it really gets there and people actually see it, and we want it to have a wow factor because we want it to look as good on the outside as it is on the inside. Sure. So we're all very excited for that. And we do, you know, those plans are eventually, we'll probably have over 900 students to close between 900 and 1,000 mm -hmm. when we have all the grades and they'll be housed there. That's, so yes, yeah, it is exciting. Really, it's really exciting. And I wanted to mention, nothing, no school gets started without OSF seal of approval and OSF, we use acronyms all the time, but right. that is the Office of School Facilities and it is a state agency that really mandates everything any school does. Yeah. Well, thank you both for all of the work that thank you're doing you. to make this school great. And we are excited to see the next phase, uh, and we can't wait to see what the building looks like. Thank you for being with us on 843 TV, where communities come to see.